Welcome to the Blackout Podcast where I get to talk to amazing people who do amazing things. And this one, this one I've been dying to do for a while now. <laughs> uh, filmmaker, director, writer, producer, uh, really super I- inspiring person. You know, I kind of aspire to be you. Uh, it's true. <laughs> Kevin Hartford, thanks for coming to the podcast today. Thank you. Okay, so I remember the very first thing I saw was Charlie's... God damn. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so what was, like, why did you make that film? Um, so that was our, my first film five through AFCOOP, which you're familiar with because you've gone through it, I think, twice now. Mm. Um, I had recently broken up with someone, um, except I was still friends with their mom online. And I was like, how do I maintain this weird friendship that I have with my ex's mom? Um, and that kind of inspired me to write that as my first kind of short that had any money behind it. Right, 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 right. Wow. Okay. So um, are you going to, like, is that the only thing you've written that has like elements of real life in it? No, everything has a bit of me in it. I find it easier just to pull little pieces from it and then kind of envelop them in something bigger. Um, so like most anecdotes you hear in one of my shorts or a feature is something I've done or said. Wow. Um, okay, wait. There's the one with the apocalypse one. Like not the, the disco. The, no, no, no. The one one is like the end of the world, and this guy's just in his house looking out the window. Do you remember? That's lemon. Uh, lemon squeezy. The feature. No, 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 no. There's a film. Oh, uh, wait for rescue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like looking outside the window and yeah, like yeah, there's yeah. this thing. That the was... sound design in that film was insane. <laughs> Um, that was my friend Sean did all the sound and editing, uh, and he, we kind of co-directed it. Um, yeah, that was just, I knew I was going to be applying to film five and I was like, I need to do something. something. So I flew to Vancouver and we, uh, we made that over the course of a weekend. I, yeah, that's funny. I forgot. I'm like, the apocalypse sure comes up a lot in my stuff. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah, 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 yeah. But like, there's... There's, I mean, because I don't think there's any of you in that one, right? It was just a <laughs> <No>. thing. <laughs> but yeah, I really love it. The sound design killed it for me. I'll, I'll pass your compliments along. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I remember that one. And then, <clears throat> okay, and then you did the one with Kumbi. That was my very first, like, time on set. Horizontal Concavity. Yeah. Yep. So I did Film 5 as writer-director. Then the next year did it as producer. Mm. And you're only allowed to do... Um, one of those three positions once right. you're not allowed to do it That's again it. So yep. I kind of wish I'd left a break between why? I, just because it's so much work <laughs> like it, just, <laughs> it takes over your life for like the whole year it does, it does, it does, um, it does but I was, I was glad to kind of get that out of the way how was, did you and Kumbi hook up and I, why did you decide to be her producer? Um, I started doing Halifax Fringe which we've talked about um and she was doing the box office at the waiting room theater, which no longer exists, RIP. Mm. Um, and I forget how, the, it was the first kind of fringe thing that I'd ever done. Um, and it, you know, I didn't know anybody. I didn't know how to publicize anything. I didn't even have postcards for it. Um, and so I was like, wow, what a huge failure this show has been. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there was like the awards night on the Sunday night. And I was like, I'm not going to go. Everyone's just going to think I'm a loser. But I went. <laughs> And then the first award they, hung out, they handed out, I won, or we won. Um, so then I just presumably got super drunk because I was so excited. <laughs> and then uh, Kumbi had been doing the box office, so I went over and talked to her in my excitement, and she was talking about doing Film 5. Um, and she's like, but we can't find a producer, which is every Film 5 team's problem is finding a producer. Yep. And so since I was so hammed, I was like, I'll be your producer. <laughs> <laughs> and so... That's it, and we've been friends ever since. Right, yo, no, no, no. I that experience for me was like, okay, this is what I want to do, and I'm not kidding with the inspiration thing. Like, I just kind of looked at the trajectory of your career, and I'm just like, <laughs> okay, he did this. Okay, I'll do this one. 
I'm just, so uh, now I'm now finding out that you're making it shorter, yeah? So now I need to figure out how to do that one, too. See, I find that hard to believe because you make, like, five shorts a year. So, so see, <laughs> what happened was, you know, my thing is, like, repetition is my thing. Yeah, like, that's, that's how, how I learn. Yeah, agreed. And so, um, like, I've wanted to do this all my life, and then I got the opportunity to do it. And I was like, I'm just going to do it. But, like, it's a lot of work. It's like, no. And I'm, like, the reverse of that is I'm also really, really lazy. Yeah. So, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. So, there was a point when that happened. But, like, in the last four years, I've not made anything. So, so now, like, okay, okay, I'm going to do that. But... You made horizontal. Co- How was that experience for you, though? Because you were like not really on set much. I will be honest and say it's the only time I've ever produced something that wasn't mine. Right. And I, I hated it. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're like the mom of the set. Right. And you're not like it doesn't feel like your baby that you put yeah. out into the world. <laughs> yes, it's like yes, the yes. writer directors, especially for film five. Because mm. um, shorts are such a like distinct thing mm. i feel like if it, was, if it was a i was a producer on a feature film it would be a lot different um but it's you're truly just shepherding everyone along and no one cares <laughs> they just <laughs> you're just like sign this paper <laughs> um, and so the first year we did it uh, me and my partner tom i was writer director who's producing um you know what producing with your spouse is like mm. um and we had to drive the truck to burnside to william f whites and pick up all the gear and i was just like <laughs> when i was producing kumbis the following year i was like well at least i'll have someone else pick up the stuff and then <laughs> surprise surprise <laughs> we're in a truck driving to burnside to william f whites and i was like oh god it's happening again <laughs> i was like nope no nope. that's one thing i know <laughs> well first of i mean it's like you know you can kind of drive it but one thing I wanted to make sure was that I had a trainee yeah. that was going to do that. Like, that was one thing I wanted to make sure. Like, uh, like the truck, uh-uh. <laughs> I couldn't force myself to ask someone else to do that, oh. which is like a, a bad habit in filmmaking is not being willing to ask for help. Because <laughs> then nobody else is. Well, the film was great. And, oh, another thing I wanted to ask you, how was, like, shooting your home? Um, so we used to live on Moran Street, uh, kind of by the... Um, Halifax Commons, right off the Commons. And I would say we had like three of my shorts, Kumbi's short, Tom Fitzgerald shot some of his TV series in our apartment and downstairs. So it was like a very well filmed <laughs> place. And then I think in my, my house on North, um, I've done three shorts. Taylor Olson did a bit of his film, which I don't think he's using that footage. Uh, Rebecca Falvey did her film five. It's also a very well filmed house, and I did my feature there too. Um, so it's just whatever's easiest, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> it's awkward to ask people to use their houses. I, I guess uh, so. You know, like during the uh, during the period this shit is happening, you don't have your home pretty much. Like, how do you navigate that during the period of what the shoot itself? Oh, you don't yeah. have your home. I mean, um, you do, but don't. I I work with a wonderful human being named Tim Lumberkett, who's my cinematographer. Mm. Um, and he's pretty, like, it's not like you come in and there's just... Everything the, in the, the world. The living room is filled with gear for three <laughs> nights. It's like, pack it in, pack it out real quick. He's mm. great. Um, yeah, it's not really, it doesn't feel like an obstruction when it's my own house and my own project. Right. But if I was, like, in someone else's house, I would just be racked with <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a it i don't know it's never seemed like a problem to me mm. it's always been like in service of something so like i mean you've worked with tim a lot how did you narrow it down to okay i love what tim is doing like how working with tim um i needed a cinematographer for a short idea with kumbi and taylor called youtube chuckles um and I was going to work with someone else who pulled out to work on Heather Young's film. Mm. So uh, Taylor suggested Tim to me, and it was just uh, just the nicest human being, the hardest worker, does great stuff, wonderful attitude, just willing to drop everything and work on something. So it was match made in heaven, as far mm. as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, <laughs> hopefully he stays with me. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he'll move on to bigger, better things. 
So, like, how many things have you guys showed together now? Oh, God. Um, we're about to do another short at the end of February, which I think will be our fourth. Wow. And then we did one feature, and we're theoretically doing another feature uh, in June. Okay, so let's rewind. Let's rewind. Talked about, you know, horizontal. You produced that. Yeah. Uh, what was the next thing? I would. I think I did like five shorts. I don't. I can't remember. It's, <laughs> I'd have to look at my MDB. <laughs> right, it was right, a lot right, of shorts. Right. Mm. And like you, the repetition helps me learn. I didn't go to film school. I, mm. um, I'm trying to learn something on each film. I kind of wish there was a point where I would stop learning. Because <laughs> you just realize how many mistakes after you're just like, oh god, <laughs> why did I not use a lav mic? Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I th- oh, God, after horizontal concavity. It was a, a few. Mm. Okay, let's, let's, let's keep through those ones <laughs> and talk about the one with the dance. Disco Apocalypse? That's the Apocalypse one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was at a wedding at a place called Ocean Stone um, for my friend Lisa Rose Snow, and um, a wonderful actor named Shelly Thompson was there. And I was standing behind her in line for something, and she turned to me and she was like, so when are you going to write me a short? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I guess I have to write Shelly a short now. <laughs> um, and so I started thinking of um, kind of ideas where I could work movement. I don't know why. I'm like big on choreographed dance, but um, there was nothing choreographed about that. I was trying to teach them how to do the moves mm. on the day. Um but it was just this idea of like rhythm and beats and people moving. And then I um, kind of built this um, sort of HIV metaphor on top of it, mm. uh, which is important to me as a gay man. Um, and yeah, that was it. It was uh, just kind of an experiment. But that, it, I think it did pretty good. I think that one's still on CBC Gym. That, yeah, the dance, I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, and it got that award at your festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, the, da- <laughs> the dance was, like, interesting to me. I'm like, oh, wow, 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 wow. Okay. I looked up disco instructions online. <laughs> it was, I'm not a choreographer, so it was very awkward. So, okay, so, and then this, uh, when was the idea for the feature that was going to take forever to make? Like, when did it come to you? And when did you think, okay, fine, I'm just going to go make this thing? Um, I had been up for a thing called Talent to Watch through AFCOOP. They nominated one person a year, or they were, they were doing two when I started it, then one the second year. But I got it two years in a row, and Telefilm said no both times. Do they give you reasons? Like, um, I never asked, because I was always just too embarrassed. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I was like, I don't want to know why. Um, so that was with a script called To the Moon, and, uh, so the last time, the second time I'd applied was with my friend Tara uh, Thorne. And she had applied with her own project called Compulsus. And Compulsus mm. got in. And I was kind of like, well, I can spend the rest of my life applying to Talent to Watch, which is sort of one of the only routes in for people who aren't established. Mm. Um, or I can just do the like Kevin Smith clerks thing and just make something. Um, and if you ever read anything about filmmaking, all the advice is always just to make something. Mm. Um, so I, I kind of worked it out in my head with Tim, where like we could shoot for nine days, treat it like nine shorts in terms of scheduling. I uh, wrote all the scenes to be two people or three people. Mm. Um, I don't know why that particular story came to me. I was thinking kind of like, I don't know falling in love with straight guys, which is a recurring theme in a gay man's life, I assume. <laughs> um, and kind of, uh, it was kind of designed to not have the same actor on set for longer than two days. Oh. And so it became kind of this teenager who asks a straight guy to prom and gets rejected and then mm. expanded to kind of his family so that I could work with all of these non-professional actors that I'd always wanted to work with. Mm. Um, I asked you if you'd do a part, you were sick. Um, I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> yes, yes, no, no, no. Yeah, I was out of. No, that's fair. Um, I'm not better. Uh, <laughs> also, I don't know. I think 
my thing about cameras is like this is the only thing I do in front of a camera. Okay. Uh, but one day though, you know, I was watching. I don't know who I was watching, but it's like some director, and he's in every film not in every film but most of the like okay so people hate michael bay for whatever reasons <laughs> yeah but like he's been in most of his films like he'll be like a scientist here and yeah. i'm like you know what i think that's an easy way to just like if i'm making my thing i can just write myself in there and i'll be like goodbye or say two words or something yeah. versus actually acting I, I, i'm gonna get into an acting question but yes i remember go ahead it was you just would have had to walk up a street and then run back. So it wouldn't have been two. It got taken over by my friend Colleen. Mm. Um, that's the Hitchcock thing is he always just had himself reading a newspaper. <laughs> so it's a storied history. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I just kind of write what comes to me. I don't really. Mm. There isn't really a huge. I'm not like what's the title was the story there. Lemon Squeezy. Mm. Um, lemons just kept coming up while I was writing it. And I was like, I need something like Clueless or American Pie that is like tangentially related to it, but not kind of. What it is? I originally called it Crime Bible, but then there wasn't enough Bible in it. Oh. So, I don't know. Wow. Okay, so you shot it over nine, but over like. It was actually like 13, because we did like nine acting days. And then like, I think we called somebody back for a 10th day. And then the other few days were like exteriors and. Um, second unit type stuff. The other thing you do is you edit all your films. Why? Because I hate myself. Why the fuck? <laughs> like, no! I, I, I don't want to... Like, I've written the thing. It's lived in my head for years. I'm like, I've shot it. I've handed it over to someone. You're like, nope, I want to watch this thing. Like, how, how do you even navigate that? It's the... It's A, not having any money. So it's easier to do it myself. Fair enough. Then B, this kind of thing where it's like, I don't want a back and forth with someone mm. over something that I can just pick myself. Like, it's that whole, like, not asking for help thing. On the next one, I'm definitely going to get an editor. Because, like, <laughs> after doing 81 minutes of a feature yeah. myself, I'm like, never again. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll, we're doing a short in a month. And I'm like, I'll edit that. But I'm like, anything over 10 minutes, mm. I'll farm out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was it. Was horrible. Like, that I mean, how do you even work. decide what you cut, right? Like, cause you, you know, you made it, right? Like, yeah, it's tough. <laughs> like, I, I love just, that shot. No, I love that shot. You know? I try to edit it until I don't cringe anymore, Fair and enough. I'm like, this is good. God damn! I'm like, <laughs> why would you do that to yourself? No, it was it was <laughs> painful. <laughs> so yeah. I, 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 okay, no more cringing. The film is done. Do you still see? Things you feel you can cut or just move. Oh yeah, the say. whole the whole thing. I've seen it with an audience three times, and every time I'm just like looking at my feet the whole time because I'm just like I'm like, no, why did I do this? Um, but the best audience was Halifax, and I recorded the audi the audio of the audience in the theater while we watched it, and then I did a cut of the film where that was the soundtrack. Mm. So I. I look at that when I need an ego boost because <laughs> you couldn't need it. You couldn't have had a better audience who was more into, into it because it was like half of them were in the film. Whoa, so I see what you're saying. There's like 30, I think there's about 30 people, 10 voices and about 20 actors on camera. Hmm. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Wow. Okay, so, you know, you said 90s. I didn't even think of how many people were working with you on those 90s. Um, Where did you have so many people though? Like... It didn't, I don't know. Um, again, it was just so that nobody would have to, so originally everybody was working for free. The idea was you would work for free in exchange for an ownership percentage, which 1% of nothing is still nothing. Right, right, right. But it's like a symbolic kind of gesture. Mm. Um, and then because I didn't want people to like have to take time off work I scheduled it for the weekends except everyone had a coffee shop or bar job so that was a moot point um and that I didn't want them to have to kind of sacrifice too much of their life to be in it mm. <clears throat> um so I was like two days three days max um but then there was just 
so many people I wanted to work with, I just kept writing these kind of like one-off scenes. Right. Um, so that's how I... Anyway, okay, so Live on Squeezy is done. <clears throat> yeah. First feature, like, okay, was that... I mean, you wanted To The Moon to be your first feature, I'm guessing. Yeah. And when you realize, okay, there's no mon- money for it, it's not <laughs> the right time, whatever. Yeah. How did you, like, I guess decide okay lemon squeeze is gonna be the one because i'm guessing you have other stories right well because it to the moon i don't think you could do for free it would be too much of a time requirement for somebody and Mm. i i'd never applied to canada council before and like canada council ended up about halfway through giving us money so i was able to lemon lemon squeezy yeah um for like what is the what fund is this did you that was um it was a grants. Uh, they all have different names. This was like the conception to completion one. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't want to wait to see if I got a yes or no because I'd applied to them before and not gotten stuff. So I was like, "It's fine. I'm August. just gonna do this, but we're gonna forge ahead." And then halfway through filming, we they were like, got, "Oh, you got it. Okay." Got did news. that change? I guess. Oh, right. What did that change? Getting that fun. Um, well, I was just kind of like. I mean, it was incredibly validating more than anything to mm-hmm. have somebody be like, yes, you're worth this much. Mm. Um, secondly was I was just going to pay for everything out of my own pocket. So it took a lot of pressure off me since mm. I don't have three grand just kind of sitting there to be spent. Um, and it was nice to be able to pay everyone, which I wasn't planning on doing. So their their time mm. maybe didn't feel so valueless um though everybody kept working as though they were working for free because <laughs> everybody would come to send be like i have to go at 4 30 because i have a dinner and i'd be like okay um so how would you uh who, do you have an ad for this bro for that no, was, okay because i'm like well that's not true that would um, be like a nightmare right there was i didn't have an ad it was me and then Tim, we worked with a guy named Josh Saunders, who's a cinematographer t- as well. Mm. But he was only there for half the days. Um, Tara Thorne came on and did the slates for like half the days. So people were kind of coming in and out. But there was no like, oh, okay. I was the one, <clears throat> the producer was doing everything. Right. <laughs> you're producing it too. <laughs> you're producing it too. Yeah. Oh my God. Don't Wait, no, no, not to the moon. No, 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 no. no. Lo- yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was it. I don't know how you do it. I'd lose my mind, actually. <laughs> like... Well, it, it ended up, because the schedule is only being like one or two days a month over like six months. So mm. it was like so infrequent as to oh, not drive me insane. Right, because, you know, yeah, versus doing nine days of that yeah, straight, that would absolutely. be like, fuck. No, I, w- I wouldn't be into it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, no, you don't want to do that. Okay, so Lemon Squeezy is done. Yep. I mean, you have that validating soundtrack now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're like, to the moon. You know the funniest thing? I remember when you told me the title, I'm like, wow. You know, you've written this movie scenes, right? Mm. And then in the last couple of years with all that's happening with crypto and stuff, to the moon has become this big slang. Yeah. And there are people that are going to think that that's what your film is about, but it isn't about that no. at all. Um, also, th- I like, um, Tom, the producer, sent me a screenshot of a film that was also called To the Moon that just came out, and I was like, Tom, there's like 23 movies called To the Moon. If you look on IMDb, it's just a huge list. So I I like the title. I don't know what I would change it to, but if we had to, I would. Um, but I think it fits. Mm. Um, also, I'm not... I don't know. I think it's okay to repeat titles throughout history. <laughs> I mean, if you love, you know, if you love the title, you love the title. Yeah. Before we get into the moon, though, I know <clears throat> you say you put elements of yourself into the things you make and all. Yeah. But like your writing process, what does that look like? Um, I do a little bit every day. I'm not, I can't kind of sustain my attention longer than a couple hours. Mm. So, um, I try to sit down and do like an hour at least of writing a day. And Mm -hmm. that isn't a lot per day, but when you add it all up over the course of a year, it's, it seems like quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of like factory writing, just sticking to a schedule and 
Yeah. Do you, once it's done, do you like send it out to people or do you just keep it or? I find the easiest way to force myself to actually follow through on making a short is to send it to someone and be like, do you want to be in this? Oh. Um, Cause that way it's real in someone mm. else's brain other than your own. <laughs> and then you actually have to follow up on it. Yeah. So I, yeah, I usually do immediately send it to someone and say, what do you think? <laughs> <clears throat> but I don't, yeah, I'm not like, I don't dwell on it too long mm. before that happens. Wow. 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 Okay. Okay. So, um, now the, I'll get to the, to the moon, but with the actors though, how was your really, how do you form that relationship and, Keep it going on and offset. Um, during filming or just in life? Let's go with during filming first, then in life. Um, I a lot, a lot, a lot of my friends are actors, so they're just kind of already there. Mm. Um, with Lemon Squeezy, I was trying hard to work with people I hadn't worked with before and just kind of knew, um, like Liam Fair and Shaheen from Hello City. I had been in a short with Shaheen. I had like a line in my mm. friend Mark's short. And then Liam had been in a play that I wrote for 24 hour theater. And I was like, <clears throat> I want to like do something with these guys. And so I wrote every part in Lemon Squeeze was written with the actor in mind. Oh. And they all said yes, which is great. Mm. But it was, <clears throat> it's because they were already kind of either a friend of mine or like in the peripheral somewhere. Mm. Um, so we all got along great uh, from my side of the story. <laughs> I don't know how they would feel. Um, but yeah, it was mostly just knowing people and being like, I'd really like to work with this person. So to the moon, I'm auditioning people for the first time, which is like, Oh, I'm not a huge fan. How are you fan. looking forward to that? <laughs> no, it's already happening, but I was just like, Oh, oh okay. Oh my God. I'm going to have to say no to so many people. <laughs> that I'm friends with. And then also like. You know, because I, I know and trust and admire, like, people I've worked with before, but then there's, like, the kind of excitement of discovering someone new. Mm. And it's like, how do I balance that? And, um, so your, your um, auditions, how do you approach that, though? I've never auditioned anyone prior to this. Mm. <laughs> it was just asking whoever, do you want to be in this? Mm. Like, every short, with the exception of Film 5 and To the Moon and the feature... The feature and all my other shorts were all just like handed it you. to someone and said, "Do you want to do this?" Mm. Just like, yeah, insane. I the nice thing about Lemon Squeezy is because I did all this stuff myself. It doesn't feel like a real movie to me, oh. but no one has ever brought that up <laughs> <laughs> in their critics because people online are you know people have opinions on Letterbox and stuff. But I'm like nobody's like this doesn't feel like a real movie, <laughs> which is the one thing I dread anyone saying. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said it out loud. <laughs> this a like Tempting a food. Movie. Okay, so um, with To the Moon and your auditions, how do you decide or I guess what you are going to use the site for or what you are using as a site for your audition? I That was also like a killer process too because I was like, what show, like what will show the character in a certain way where I can tell that they kind of have a, a bead on it and then also what has enough dialogue one after the other. I'm not like saying anything mind blowing here. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was tough because I was like, I want the actors to have good lines where there's a lot of them one after the other. But I didn't necessarily write all the scenes into the moon to, to kind of focus on one person. Like oh. it's also got a fairly big cast, smaller than Squeezy, but okay. um, yeah, finding a side was tough if, especially for the um one of the lead roles claire i could find a good one for the first audition but for the callbacks i was like <laughs> she's got great moments kind of interspersed throughout mm. but there isn't another like big block of texts to like Get it. two to three pages it's anyway um so when i got the callbacks the self tapes for that i was just <laughs> like oh god I should have just written a new scene. <laughs> oh, oh, it wasn't in person? No, they were all, um, everything was self-tape. Oh, man. Uh, I, I, I did, I've done one Zoom so far, and I'll, I'm doing another Zoom on Tuesday. Oh, okay. So, like, <clears throat> with the self-tape, though, it, was that difficult to decide based on what you saw? Um, no, it was, 
again, because I'd never really done it before, it was mm. very surprising and delightful. And it was like, um, you know, people who are great, great actors, but then there would just be those like three or four who really got it without any direction and anything to go on kind of except the page, mm. which I know is the auditioner's job, but I was just, you see that one person who's like really got it and you're like, oh man, you match 100% what I had in mind <laughs> when I wrote it. And so then you're like, then how do I pick from these people? Mm. Um, yeah. Wow. No. I mean, if you had the option to do it, like to pick up self-tapes or just do it in person? Um, the only, th again, the only time we did in person was for my film five and it was, it was neat, but it's also, you don't, the vibe in the room is very different from watching it on tape. Like, I would see someone in the room that I thought was amazing, and then we'd watch the video later and be like, oh, uh, this isn't very good. Mm. Um, I don't know if that's from just being a th fan of theater, um, but it is it is really interesting to just see someone within those four f um, straight lines. Um, so, yeah, but then callbacks sometimes the person you thought was brilliant is like <laughs> you're like oh <laughs> I, I, I must have missed something yeah um, <laughs> yeah and so i think the next step is just kind of zoom conversations oh, okay. with the short list first off like i don't know who's on the jury on afkoop's thing yeah but they're pretty decent with choosing so yeah something had to be Something must have stood up from that script, right? Sure, sure. For them to choose it back to back, you know? So. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. It's so, juries are like so tricky because everyone's got their own opinion. So you're just like, it could be the complete wrong opinions <laughs> in any, because with Talent to Watch, it goes from the AFCOOP jury to a like national jury of five. And it's like, there's no guarantee they're going right. to resemble anything like an AFCOOP jury. Yeah, well, it's all, I guess, shooting the dice. <laughs> yeah, you just throw spaghetti against the wall. I think that's I'm all like, any of us can do. What is going to stick? Okay, so um, now when we're talking, you said you're doing this whole a uh, shorter year, why? Um. I like to always have something in the film fest. <laughs> oh, was, well, yeah, that's, that it, is... Always nice. It was one of the. I moved here in 2011, and it was the first thing I did was go to the film fest, mm. and it's so it's kind of every time I'm sitting in a theater in Park Lane watching something on the big screen, it's like the greatest thrill of my entire life. <laughs> so, and it's also like a way to keep those wheels kind of greased in my brain. Yeah. Um, and it's I do constantly want to work with new people, and so in the latest short, it's going to be like three or four actors I haven't worked with before. So I'm, How many people are in the film itself? The short or the... The short. Um, seven? Oh, okay. Yeah. How long is it going to be? Ten minutes. Seven people? Yeah. Oh, my God. Why do you like giving yourself... <laughs> like, do you, do you... What is that? Like, do you like torturing yourself? Like, seven people? It's still... It's still going to be two days and... Right. It's... I don't know. I... I've, actors are like Pokemon. I want to catch them all. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, w I'm, I just want to write a movie where there's like a hundred speaking parts. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're walking towards that. If you're putting, like yeah. all the seven people are talking to. Say again? The seven people in the movie. Yeah. They're speaking. They all have parts, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> well, it's 10 pages. It's, you know. Right, right. What is it called? At least. Uh, this one is called Slay. Oh, like Slay? Because that slang means so many things. It's, oh, well, I don't even know if it's a slang or if it's the word itself. Um, it's the very gay meaning of the word Slay, okay. which is like work. Because mm. um, I went to the Indianapolis LGBT Film Fest and um, met a young lady named Sylvia. And at the end of every sentence, she'd be like, Slay. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm going to use that. So... Now I am. <laughs> <laughs> Whether or not it's successful, who knows. <laughs> Do you, um, I mean, okay, so Slay, you're going to make 
gonna cut it too, right? Yeah. Okay. Ten minutes. It's not that it's not... <laughs> if it's eleven minutes, you're not gonna yeah. touch it. <laughs> I'm gonna abandon it if it's eleven minutes. <laughs> okay. Um, and then you already have your actors locked, or? Yep. Okay. So wait. you have to do a lot of paperwork. They're all union actors, so I had, we're doing. Um, oh wait, like are you like how, how, you're funding this or? No, it's called a, it's a MIP, which is a member initiated project. Um, are you a member? No, but my partner and all the actors are. Um, so it's like what I had, what I set up for Lemon Squeezy was based on the MIP because Disco Apocalypse was a MIP, Breakout was a MIP. Everything I've done with. Oh, community. you can do many of those things. Yeah. Do you know what? I is the MIP kind of like the Afcoop thing? Afcoop um, is a training film, which is why you can mix union and non-union actors. Oh. A MIP is just Actra, and everybody owns a percentage of it. Oh, um, so everyone agrees to kind of work for nothing in exchange for owning part of the. Film. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. So it's a way for union actors to work on something without having to kind of have a budget. So is a union person that kind of has to apply for it, right? Yeah, which would have been my partner, Tom. Okay. Tom is producing it in a yeah. way. Tom usually, like, brings all the food <laughs> <laughs> and gets the coffee. I remember on the uh, on the uh, horizontal concavity there was this he was soup. Cooking. There was this yeah, soup. Was like I don't know what the soup was. What is like freaking amazing? It was our friend Andrea Ritchie and uh, Tom, oh Tom with, the, with the fucking buns. Oh my god! <laughs> like I, I knew it was just like supposed to be a sub, but yeah, it, yeah. it was freaking am- like I I don't know what that was, but I love that one. I remember now it's like six years ago, something like this. Five years ago, whatever. Anyway, six? I think it might have been six years. Yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. I'll, I'll mention it to Andrew. I <laughs> know, I fucking love it. <laughs> um, yeah, so, and yeah, uh, getting ready to shoot that or? Yeah, so we've, I, yeah, usually Taylor is my producer and Taylor does all the paperwork and I was like, I'll just have Tom be the producer and, uh... um, but I've been trying to do the paperwork on Tom's behalf and it's, <laughs> I'm not an expert at it. <laughs> so I've had numerous conversations with Actra where I'm like, I don't know what, I where this goes. <laughs> um, oh, man. Yo, I've been looking forward to this. Okay, so I- I'm going to let you go with this one, though. <laughs> sure. Um, you are you're doing this, you know, there's the theater stuff, the fringe. Actually, this is not the last. I just saw the fringe thing. Yeah. You know, I get, are you going to do something? I don't have time. Oh, this is like okay. the I, I would like started writing something. It was like, realistically, I can't. Yeah. I don't have the time. Yeah. Okay. 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 So now this is a real last one though. Like you're doing all these things you love as in, and some of it, it's, it's fun because you get to work with friends. Mm. But what do you do when it gets difficult? I don't know if it ever gets difficult, but when it's like gets difficult, you're like, the fuck am I doing this for? How do you push through that hump? Um, <clears throat> it's, the, hmm, what a great question. Uh, it doesn't really get difficult when it's my own stuff because it's like everything that goes wrong is my own fault. Mm. So I don't have to like yell at anyone. Um, with stuff like on Kumbi's Film 5, when stuff would go late, I would just kind of like quietly lose my mind <laughs> and wait for the evening to end. Um, but I, th- keeping the kind of end product in mind, which is if you kind of give yourself no choice but to finish something, you mm. come up with solutions. If you're like, I can't do this anymore, then you're just going to have a bunch of half-finished movies that go nowhere. Right. So it's kind of like if you commit in your brain to having a finished product, you will also force yourself to come up with ways to get there. Mm. Um, I'm sure this isn't mind-blowing advice either. Um, but it's just that like psychic trick of being like, I have to meet this deadline. You have no choice, pretty yeah. much. You have no choice. You have to meet it, or it's nothing. Mm. So that always. I went to journalism school, for, straight out of high school. So like deadlines is kind of ingrained into my brain, and mm. it helps a lot to kind of. You know, I'd say it was discipline, but it's not. It's just like. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like. 
just a trick where I'm like, I have to or I'll die. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to die. Yeah. Oh man, Kevin, this has been so much fun. <laughs> Good. I, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what uh, to the moon is gonna look like. Because oh. at least you won't have to shoot over six months. So yeah, <laughs> it'll, it'll hopefully be back to back. Uh, and one, once you know what, once to the moon is out, and I've seen it, I'll definitely invite you to come back because I want to talk about <laughs> okay. that one. Like, is there any difference between making that and making lemon squeezy? I imagine it'll be <laughs> a world of difference. Yeah, there'll be an actual crew on this. Right. Thing. Thank you so much, Kevin. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm.